Hi guys, Mr. Riley here. Today I'm going to be going on the road for the first installment of what I call Heroes in the Hudson Valley. This where I examine the lives of extraordinary people from the seventh grade social studies curriculum that fought for liberty and justice and have a connection to the Hudson Valley. I'll take you to historic places where they once walked to get a better understanding of their lives and perhaps to find some clues to help inspire us as we work to create a more just world for all. Today's spotlight is on Sojourner Truth from Hurley, New York. So come join me as we go search for the truth. Hurley, New York is about 90 miles north of New York City in Ulster County and is about 65 miles northwest of Carmel, New York. Sojourner Truth was born enslaved in 1797 with the name of Isabella Bomfrey. She will overcome enormous obstacles to become a nationally known speaker for women's rights, abolitionism, and justice. She spent the first 32 years of her life in the Hudson Valley in Ulster County, New York. She is most famous for her Ain't I a Woman speech given in 1851 at the Women's Rights Conference in Akron, Ohio. Sojourner Truth will also be named by Smithsonian Institute as one of the 100 most significant Americans of all time. Later this month, a monument will be unveiled in Central Park to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the passage of the Women's Right to Vote Amendment, featuring Sojourner Truth, Susan B. Anthony, and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, called the Women's Rights Pioneers Monument. Sojourner Truth had a commanding presence. She stood six feet tall with a deep, resonating voice with a Dutch accent and was renowned for her quick wit. Truth met with three presidents in the White House. She was friends with many of the leading reformers of her day. She traveled from Maine to Kansas, speaking at abolitionists and suffragist conferences, conferences with, and was an early advocate on behalf of the freed slaves during and after the Civil War. Most of her first 32 years in the Hudson Valley will be spent enslaved. Although slavery in the North is over, often overlooked, slavery was just as brutal and dehumanizing as in the South. Systematic slavery began in New York in 1626 by the Dutch and will continue in New York for 200 years until 1827. Truth will publish a narrative of her life that will document her life as an enslaved woman in the North and expose the cruel treatment that was done to her father by being kidnapped from Africa as well as her brothers and sisters being sold off to slavery. Like other slaves, she experienced the misery of being sold and was cru cruelly beaten and mistreated. Around 1815, she fell in love with a fellow slave named Robert, but they were forced apart by Robert's master. Truth instead was forced to marry a slave named Thomas, with whom she had five children. Truth will be face the physical, mental, and emotional toll of being enslaved in the Hudson Valley. Somehow she will continue to have faith that will allow her to walk to freedom. She will eventually leave the Hudson Valley and change her name from Isabella Bomfrey to Sojourner Truth. She got, goes on to become a famous preacher and reformer. Her story in the Hudson Valley provides insight into the horrors of slavery in the North while continuing to offer hope and inspiration for all of us to achieve a better world. One, this is near the birthplace of Sojourner Truth. Truth was born in Hurley in 1797 with the name Isabella Bumfrey and one is one of seven slaves owned by Johannes Hardenberg. Her parents, James and Elizabeth, had a dozen children, all of whom, with the exception of Isabella and her youngest brother, had been sold off at a young age. The family was the property of Johannes Hardenberg, an American revolutionary colonel, and a wealthy landowner. The Hardenberg family and their seven slaves all spoke Dutch, reflecting the culture of the first European settlers in this area. Isabella was still a toddler when Hardenberg died and the family was inherited by his son, Charles. They lived in the cellar of his house, which also served as a hotel, sleeping on straw laid down on the damp floor beds, getting light from a burning pine knot. When Charles died in 1806, Isabella was auctioned off for $100 with a herd of sheep to John Nelly, who owned a store on the Roundout Creek. 
Nellie was a cruel master, severely beating the nine-year-old girl when she failed to understand his commands because they were in English. She still spoke Dutch. When her father, who had been freed, visited her and complained, she helped find her another master, having suggested the tavern owner, Martina Schreiber, who had never owned a slave, that he buy her. I found the blue sign where Sojourner Truth served as a tavern keeper uh, while she was enslaved from ages about 11 to ages 13. So not the typical upbringing, but this is part of slavery in the Hudson Valley uh, around the 1820s. The Shrivers were crude. She learned to swear from them and smoke a pipe, but they were relatively kind. She took the ferry to the bustling town of Roundout to buy supplies, carried fish in a basket from the river, and performed other errands. She was well fed, and it was here where she had her growth spurt to the height of six feet tall and learned to sing. In 1810, when Truth was about 13 years old, Shriver sold her for $175 to John Dumont, who owned a farm 10 miles south of Kingston. Truth by now had learned English, though with difficulty and she earned Dumont's respect by her incredible hard work. Dumont, who she served until she was 29 years old, had, quote, a vein of kindness and consideration for the slaves, end quote, according to Truth's narrative. Judging from the narrative, her relationship with Dumont was complex. Around 19, she fell in love with a slave named Robert, who lived on a neighboring farm. One day, Robert's owner brutally beat him in the yard of Dumont's farmhouse. Robert never visited Sojourner Truth again. Meanwhile, Dumont married Is Isabella or Sojourner off to Tom, an older slave on the farm. Although there was no legal form of marriage between slaves in New York State at this time, she had five children who were considered property of the Dumonts. All right, I'm at stop three, and this is where Sojourner Truth took her walk to freedom. New York State had begun to legislate the abolition of slavery back in 1799. In 1826, the state announced the emancipation of all remaining slaves on July 4th of the next year. However, children and young adults were still bound to be servants until the age of 27. He had agreed to set Isabel free a year earlier. However, when the date approached, he changed his mind, claiming a hand injury made her less productive. Isabella spun 100 pounds of wool for Dumont which she considered a fulfillment of her obligation to him, then escaped one night in the fall of 1826 by walking with her infant daughter, Sophia. They went 11 miles or so to a house of a Quaker. So it's at this spot where Sojourner Truth decided to walk to freedom. She eventually ended up with at the home of abolitionists Isaac and Maria Wegman. When Dumont tried to take her back, the Van Wegmans paid Dumont $20 plus $5 for baby Sophia so that Isabella could stay with them in safety. This is the fourth stop on the Sojourner Truth tour, and I'm here at the footsteps of the courthouse, of the Ulster County Courthouse, and this is where Sojourner Truth went to court and sued to get her son back, who had been taken enslaved and brought down to Alabama. So she tirelessly kept coming to court and battling for the right to bring her son back to New York. And she won her case. So she's the first African-American to win a court case. All right, site five. This is the Methodist Church of St. James. And this is where Sojourner Truth went and had a religious experience which led her to believe that she should be a preacher and this is where it all happened uh, back after she was freed and now she wanted to know what to do with her life and she chose the route of itinerant preacher and it's all because of a sign she got right here at the site of this church. So the spirit of Sojourner Truth lives on here in Kingston, New York, as we continue to fight for liberty and justice for all. So thank you, Sojourner, for inspiring us.
So there's our final stop of the Sojourner Truth Tour. And at age 32, Isabella Bomfrey will leave the Hudson Valley and head south to New York. After her time in New York City, she will set out as Sojourner Truth and she will be a tireless advocate for women's rights and the rights of the abolitionists in ending slavery. So she got her start right here in the Hudson Valley, unfortunately enslaved, but she will tell her story through her narrative and help change the conscience of the nation to wake up to the evils of slavery. So it all got started right here in the Hudson Valley. So thanks for watching and keep enjoying history and the Hudson Valley. Bye for now.